Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. The flat earth community stays confused over the difference between atmospheric pressure and gas pressure. We've shown them gas pressure in an open pipe, but they still are having a hard time understanding it. So I thought perhaps one way of doing this might be to show them how we derive the barometric formula which will very accurately predict the pressures that we actually measured. Now in order to do that, I'm going to enlist the help of my favorite flat earth proponent, the sleeping warrior himself. Anthony, are you ready? This is an egg. Yes, Anthony, we know that's your egg. We're not going to do the egg experiment today, Anthony. We're going to derive the barometric formula. So pay attention, we'll get back to you in a second. Atmospheric pressure, which we will call P, depends on the height above sea level that you're making the measurement, and it depends on being in the gravitational field of the Earth. If we take an arbitrary gas column like you see on the right that has an area S and a height H, we can figure out the weight of the column of gas. Weight is just force, and from Newton's second law, force is mass times acceleration, F equals mg, as you see in expression 1 there. But the mass is simply the density of the gas times the volume of the gas. In this case, density is going to be represented by rho. That's quite common in physics. So we have the expression force equals rho, the density, times g the acceleration of gravity times h, the height of the column times s, the area of the column. Now we'd like to know what the pressure is. And pressure, of course, is force per unit area. So F divided by s. Using the expression we just derived above, rho g h s divided by s is simply rho g h. So the pressure that the gas is exerting is the density of the gas times the acceleration of gravity times the height of the column. That's not too hard. So pressure is density times the acceleration of gravity times the height of the gas column. Now if we imagine that we take a small height of that column, just a small section of it, we can say that a small change in pressure, dp, will be equal to minus the density of the column times the acceleration of gravity times dh, that small change in height. And we end up with that equation. The minus sign is needed because the pressure has to decrease as altitude increases. Now we're going to assume that atmospheric air is an ideal gas. In other words, all the pressure is hydrostatic. It's not strictly true because the atmosphere contains water, but we can use it for our purposes here. The ideal gas law says PV equals NRT. N is the number of moles of gas. In order to get that, we use equation 4, which says PV equals, and in place of N, we have little m divided by big M. Little m is the mass of the gas in that column, Big M is the molar mass of atmospheric air. So there's the ideal gas law uh, stated in terms of our column here. Now if we divide by V on both sides, we get P equals little m divided by V big M times RT. But think about this. Mass divided by volume is density. So we can restate that as P equals rho density divided by big M times RT. And if we uh, rearrange things a little bit, we end up with density equals molar mass times pressure divided by the gas constant R times T. This is a parts per million counter. Anthony, we're not doing the egg experiment. Now let's put this into a differential relationship. A small change in pressure, 
dp is equal to minus rho, which is the density of the gas or the or the atmosphere, times the acceleration of gravity times a small change in height, dh. But we found out uh, also that rho can be stated as the molar mass of the gas times the pressure of the gas divided by the gas constant r times the temperature t. That's from the uh, ideal gas law. All of that times g dh. Now we have a differential relationship. dp over dh is equal to minus mg over rt times p. And if we just do a little rearranging, we end up with 1 over p dp equal to minus mg over rt dh. Now we can integrate both sides of that equation. On the left side, we'll integrate 1 over p dp from p0, which is a uh, sea level pressure, up to the pressure that we're looking for, p, and that will be equal to minus mg over rt, all of those are constants, times the integral of dh. The integral of 1 over p is, of course, ln p, so the left side evaluates to ln p minus ln p0, and that equals minus mg over rt times the integral of dh, which is just h. Now we can take ln p minus ln p0 and restate that as ln of p divided by p0. And that will be equal to minus mg over rt times h. We can get rid of the logarithm simply by raising e to the power of both sides. So e raised to the ln of p over p0 is simply p over p0. And that will be equal to e raised to the minus mg over rt times h. And we have the barometric formula. p is equal to p0, the atmospheric pressure, times e raised to the minus molar mass times gravity divided by gas constant times temperature times height above sea level. So the dependency of barometric pressure on altitude is given by a formula that we just derived using nothing more than Newton's second law of motion, the ideal gas law, and some fundamental definitions for density and pressure. There you see all the constants that are used. If you're using those constants, the formula is very simple. The pressure at any given height is equal to sea level pressure, and you can do that in any unit you want to choose. It can be uh, inches of uh, water gauge, for instance, or pounds per square inch or whatever for P0, times E to the minus point zero 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 one two h where H is the height above mean sea level. That's simple enough. Let's see if it really works. You might remember that I did an experiment where I took an open top pipe, filled it full of butane, and measured gas pressure in the pipe. What we want to do now is use the formula we just derived to see if the pressure readings that I made make any sense. We have to make one slight modification to the formula you see there on the right. We're not looking for total pressure, we're looking for the uh, small pressure that we're measuring just in this little section of pipe here. And we also can't use the molar mass of butane alone because the reference is the atmosphere. So we have to take the difference between butane and uh, atmospheric air molar masses. When we do that, there's the data. You see the column height uh, expressed in meters, and you see the pressures that we calculate using this formula versus the actual pressures that we measured. The errors are very, very small. The amount, the, the largest error is 2.92%.
Now keep in mind that this is certainly not laboratory quality equipment, nor is it is was the uh, uh, experiment or observation made under what I would consider controlled uh, conditions. Still, we got within 3%, and I think that's really pretty good. There's a link to the original video where I made those measurements if you're interested in looking at that. But this is all really about whether our atmosphere is being held in place by the acceleration of gravity or by some other means as the flat earth community continues to proclaim. Well, one of our viewers uh, contacted me. He goes by the name Arctic Hayes. And Arctic Hayes is a professor who studies the relationship between our Earth's atmosphere and the oceans. And he reminded me that he could use or we could use uh, atmospheric data taken by uh, weather balloons and very simply calculate the force of uh, uh, the acceleration of gravity uh, using the formula of uh, dp equals ex gravity times density of the gas or the air times dh so gravity uh, or the acceleration of gravity is dp divided by dh all of that divided by the density of the gas now we won't go through all of the details uh, there are a lot of measurements, I think a total of 110 different uh, altitudes where the balloon took data and reported it. RDKs took all of that using the formula that's above and, uh, and some other stuff that uh, has to be done to calculate what the gas density is. He ended up with 109 different values at, uh, at each incremental altitude. And when averaged, those values uh, indicate an acceleration of gravity of 9.818 meters per second squared. That's within 1% of the laboratory measured value of 9.807, I think it is. I believe that answers the questions. Uh, I don't think anyone can look at this information any longer and deny the fact that the Earth's atmosphere is being held in place by an acceleration equal to 9.807 meters per second squared at sea level. That's just the end of the story, guys. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hey, let me know if you guys like this kind of video. We may do more of them in the future. If you did like this one, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down there. There's a link to the Patreon account. And Gladys, we're out of here.